Hello everyone, Ryan Moore with HMS Psyche and today we're going to rig the boat. We have everything we need on board but I've taken the precaution of clearing the decks of all of our safety equipment and other uh, bits and bobs just so that we can rig the boat and then that stuff is going to come back in. We're going to start with the foremast and uh, rig up the bowsprit and then the main and then we're going to do the sheets and uh, in a later video we'll talk about uh, rigging up the engine and uh, any other little bits and pieces that uh, I might have forgotten. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is actually find the foremast. And this is easily done because there are plates at the front of each of the two masts. This one says front mast, which would be foremast. There's another mast called the main mast and its plate reads uh, main mast. And then just next to it here, this is the collar where that mast goes in. And you can see down below, that is the mast step. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna open up the hatch here and observe the mast step. And that is the good luck coin that Girth has put in there. It is a HMS Shannon Tooney. So we're gonna zoom back out, have a look at, uh, at the collar again, and then make sure it's clear. And we're going to remove these two belaying pins, put them aside and slide this assembly out. So now we have a clear path to insert the foremast. The next thing we're gonna do is check all of the, the rigging to make sure it's actually in place before we raise the mast. The last thing you wanna do is put it up and have to take it back down. So what we've got here is the snotter and it looks pretty secure. I think we left it in pretty good shape when we packed this up last fall. But uh, what can happen is this whole assembly can come crashing down or, or open up the sail and send the boom across the deck, so you just really wanna be cautious about that. The other thing we're gonna look for is further up at the head of the mast, or mast head. You wanna make sure there are three things. The first, this is the jib halyard block. You wanna make sure that's wrapped around the head of the mast. And then there should be two shroud loops around the head of the mast. Right now, I can only see two. Oh, there's the, th this, the third one, so we're just going to wrap that around and so that it's clear. There's a, a port and a starboard shroud. So when we raise the mast, these are going to go up with it. And then we're going to secure those through dead eyes and into a set of shackles that are just abaft the bow there. Okay, I have just checked the run of the mast and made sure that it wasn't fouled on any lines or, or none of its lines were fouled on anything else. There's about a thousand things on this boat that it can catch on. So as I raise the mast, I want to do this once. I don't want to do it multiple times. So here we go. Grab and hold of the mast. Up it comes. And I'm going to back it up. Line up the base of the mast with the step that I showed you earlier. And lift. Walking forward. Pushing it up, lining that mast up with that step. Now I push it into the step hole and I'm just rotating the mast to make sure that the plate that I showed you earlier is facing forward. And then I'm going to get my collar and I'm going to slide that back into place. And I'm going to get those two belaying pins put them back where they came from. So for all intents and purposes, that mast is secure in, in port or on land. All right, next up is our shrouds. This gives uh, a second and third point of security for the mast and you can see that's the dead eye with a shackle and a cotter pin and that's going to go into that hole right there all right moving up to the bowsprit um before we get there i've uh, left a little bit of a mess for myself so i'm going to clean that up i'm going to close the four mast hatch here so that i can get at it and i'll show you the shrouds in a bit more detail. 
And there's the, the, the pin attaching to the shackle right there. This is our bowsprit here. It has two points of connection with the boat. Right here, this collar and this yoke right here. The yoke gets attached to this stanchion, which slips over this post. And then uh, behind the post, you can see the prow. And uh, that, that prow is where the collar is going to attach. So I'll do my best to show this to you. So the stanchion post goes only one way and it lines up with this hole right here in the bow post and uh, our little plaque here always faces aft to the crew that most most need the reminder so i'm going to pull that cotter pin out and wiggle that bolt out at the same time i'm going to pull the cotter pin out there and wiggle, wiggle the boat out to make this easy on myself. Okay, I had the bolts out and I, I placed them back into, or I placed the pins back into the bolts just so that they don't get lost while you're doing stuff. So I'm gonna take the, the, the eye bolt here and I'm gonna run it through the hole and it pops out here and I replaced the cotter pin for that one. We'll come back to that eye bolt shortly. And then this is the top pin here we're gonna need the bow sprit, so I'll grab that. And line this up here. And try to get the holes to line up with the holes in this guy. So, Take my pin out, wiggle that sucker in. And replace the cotter pin into that bolt. Okay, so bow spurts in the next step. You gotta get this bolt out. It screws out from the collar that it's on. that eye bolt there and that goes over the prow don't get your finger in there it should line up with the hole nicely you should be able to screw it right back in you can follow it on the other side here and it should catch the threads on the other side and eventually compress so that it's uh, latches on to the prow All right, there we go. Okay, next up, the bob stay. So we're gonna jump down onto the ground here and rotate the camera. That's the bob stay there, neatly hanging from the bowsprit. Gonna make sure it's free and clear. And this guy attaches to this eye bolt or U-bolt, and then you just screw this the right way, the correct way, and you can see the tension on the bob stay starts to build. And the bob stay is there to counteract the pressure from the jib. When the jib blows out either way, it's not pulling the bowsprit upwards. This holds the bowsprit in place. So there's a nice tight bob stay right there. All right, next we're gonna look at the mistake that I made, which was not running the jib halyard through the block that I showed you earlier. So I'm gonna take the mast down, sort that out, send it back up and come back to you. All right, here's that jib halyard that I forgot. So we've run it through the block now. And just a quick note, there is a stopper knot on one side of the rope so that uh, if the halyard ever flies up too far, it'll stop in the block and we still have control over it, we can pull it back down to deck and reclaim the jib. So here we are back at the jib with the jib halyard. I've used a, a bowl in there. Thank goodness my winter skills held up. I had tried to record the tying of it, but uh, I forgot to press record or it didn't work. So the, um, the jib, the head of the jib is the only 
piece of the jib that doesn't have a rope already attached to it. When we downrig, we keep the sheets and the outhaul on it and only the halyard comes off. So that's why we use the bowl in here. And then when you send this up the mast, it hits the block that we talked about and there isn't a lot of um, excess space between the jib head and the block or rather there shouldn't be because it's a rather large sail that that actually does extend pretty much from the tip of the bowsprit all the way up the mast i've installed two belaying pins into the foremast collar and this is our jib halyard with that knot and i'm just going to belay that to the pin just for now because we're not actually raising the sail but I want to make sure it's secure and out of the way. So that's, that's that. Next up, we're going to do the outhaul. That is the piece of rope that extends the jib out the bowsprit and back into the boat so we can pull it in and out and it doesn't uh, go in the water. So what I've got here is the outhaul. On Psyche, we have used blue tape to indicate halyards, which includes the outhaul. And we've used green tape to indicate sheets. And uh, when we get into actually sailing the boat, we can talk a bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna untie this, and then I'm gonna run it through these eyes at the tip of the bowsprit, and then back in through this eye here, and then towards the collar with belaying pins. And that's gonna give me outhaul control of the bow of, of the jib okay here we are bringing the outhaul through that eye at the very tip of the bowsprit i'm just going to pull it all through and the, the jib is going to come with it so you can see the position now of the foot of the jib relative to the bowsprit i'm going to take the outhaul back and run it through this eye And you get to see how that's gonna work. So when I want the jib taut, I can pull this from inside the boat instead of climbing out there. And when I wanna bring the jib in, I loosen the outhaul and just drag it all right back and into the forepeak. And uh, here we go back again, just to get it out there. And then I'm gonna belay it to one of these pins later so that we can keep it out of the way and then we'll uh, haul up the jib and show you what it looks like okay previously I showed you the, uh, the halyard for the jib I've actually moved it over to this uh, star uh, port cleat here I'm just gonna or port belaying pin I'm gonna unbelay it and give it a tug and you should be able to see the mat uh, the jib go up And you can see the outhaul is taut and belayed there. And going up the sail, there's where the halyard meets the block. And then coming back down to my hand and a handy belaying pin. And we typically raise and lower the jib first because it has the best control that helps with turning, maneuvering the boat. And then we've got two sheets here, which have green tape on them. And if we unravel them, we'll run one of these sheets each on each side of the mast. So you can see now it's divided into two. Put one on port, one on starboard, and then when the ship tacks, you can change which sheet you operate from as a matter of convenience on which side of the boat you're on. Right now the wind's just all over the place. Our friend the jib sheet 
is rove through these blocks just aft of the foremast. And that gives us all the control we need for whoever's, uh, don't try that at home. We'll reattach that, but let's pretend it is attached. That allows you to send the jib sheet back forward and control the jib from the cockpit or from the the, the, pa, uh, the bow. And uh, therefore, when you're in the bow, if this is rigged properly, you now have full control of outhaul, halyard, and both sheets managed from the bow. Okay, next up is the foresail sheets. Again, green tape indicates a sheet, and we're just gonna run these exactly as we did to the jib into a set of blocks just aft the main mast. There's the main mast step, and there's the four sheet block. And this allows us to control the foresail from amidships about that position right there. The blocks lead the sheets back and then forward again. And that way we've got enough room for whoever's in the bow to do what they're doing. And you'll see that the foresail, once it's unbrailed, actually does come this far back into the boat. All right, for convenience, I just set up the brailing line here. We're gonna unbrail the foresail and let it fly and the sheets will, will be able to control it. So I'm just letting that go. And there's, depending on who does this, um, it could be brailed in a number of ways. But uh, my way is if there's one knot there you get rid of, you should be able to just pull on the brailing line from there and it all just unravels all the way up the mast. And you just keep pulling until that sail comes right out. And of course we always test this ashore to make sure that there's no issues. So there goes the foremast loose. There's our friend the snotter holding the sprit yard to the mast itself. And we'll just unravel this guy here. And you can see we've got a nice foresail, which based on the wind direction is just gonna go wherever it wants today. So I'm gonna braille that back up so it's not in the way of the main. And then we're gonna do the main. When you run the sheets through their respective blocks, it's always handy to put a stopper knot in here so that if the sheet pulls through the block, you don't lose control of the sail. I like a good figure eight knot, classic old stopper knot. You can see the sheet pulls through. It doesn't actually get sucked through the block and it stays there. Okay, onto the main. Similar to the bow, we're gonna pull out these two pins on the, the main mast collar. Put them there for convenience. Slide this guy off and put it aside. Now's a good time to check the bilge. Check for rabbit animals and maybe some of Girth Ship's biscuit. And check this guy. This is our bilge plug. It goes in that hole there. And if you don't put it in that hole, water comes up that hole when you put the boat in the water. And it's just as simple as pressing it in there. So we've got a secure bilge. I'm just gonna remove that because we're on land and I like the airflow into the bilge. And go back to our mast step. So the hatches are open. I'll just put this sponge aside, clear this line out. And there's our mast step and the collar position. And this is sort of the opposite mirror of the, the bowsprit where the collar is actually in front of the mast instead of behind it. And we're gonna check our mast. So we've got a mast here. Is it the main? 
Well, it says rear. So we're gonna take that as the main. And we're just gonna check and make sure that there's no ropes, no lines caught on anything. Um, by now you probably have a few sheets running here and there and they're all gonna get in the way and this is gonna be real entertaining. But what you're really looking for is these. These are the two shroud eyes over the top or head of the mast. And as long as those are in there, you should be fine maneuvering the mast around everything else to get it in. If you don't ensure those are there, uh, you're gonna have a bad time taking the mast down and, and putting them back. All right, this is probably the best vantage point to watch the main go up. You won't see it socket into the mast step, but I think you saw that with the bow or the, the foremast. So uh, I've checked all the lines and made sure that the shrouds are attached and clear of any kind of obstructions or anything that can get tangled in. Let's hope this goes well and I can do it in one try. I think that went okay. I'm just going to reinstall the collar so that uh, the mast is secure. It's blowing around a bit. But there we go. That's the main mast. Then we're going to do the shrouds, which are going to go there. Okay, next up is the main mast sheets. These are a little bit different than the four, uh, four mast. There used to be a set of blocks all the way at the stern of the boat, and we would uh, control the sheets from that set of blocks, but that meant two additional lines going forward on each side of the boat that were in the way of the coxswain. So we've done something a little bit different here. I'm gonna try my best to show you. So here's the port, sorry, the starboard sheet and it's going into this little fair lead. And all I'm gonna do here is tie a stop or not. And then there's the green tape that I mentioned earlier indicating that this is in fact a sheet. So, let's see if I can do this. Ta-da, figure eight knot. All right, so when you pull on that, it does not come out of the hole. This goes back to this block here, and this is going to be our traveler. So I'm pulling in the slack from the starboard sheet, and I'm gonna take the end of the port sheet, which I've conveniently fouled on the rudder. Sorry about that. Okay, port sheet goes in the hole, pull her through, and do another stop or not. Which for convenience right now is just gonna be a pretzel knot because I can only do things. I only have so many hands. Okay, so again, stop or not prevents that rope from coming through. And when I unbrail the foresail, this block 
will actually be about where that stern post is and depending on the wind direction it'll move to one side or the other traveling on that sheet and all I got to do is control one rope which could be that one or it could be that one it's wherever I happen to be sitting or whoever's sitting in the cockpit controlling the boat but uh, just to to tighten up the sail all you gotta do is pull on one end to loosen it let it go so that's how the travel traveler will work when I unbraille the sail I'll show you exactly what I mean I have loosened the brailing line for the main and I'm just gonna find some convenient place to secure this probably to this cleat right here so that it's out of the way I've just made sure that there's enough slack in it that it's not holding a sail back so you know you typically want something nice and secure so you don't lose this line because if you lose this line you can no longer bring in the sail and that's when we get the cat of nine tails out but for now since we're on land i'm just going to do a, a knob job of it and i want to show you how the sheets work with the traveler so if i if i could stop tripping over the bucket of belaying pins if i'm in the the cockpit controlling the boat with our friendly Seaman Suzuki here. Uh, I'm usually also responsible for controlling the main sheet just because this is where it comes to. So we've got the two ends of the sheet run into these two holes here. This one's already taut. So I'm gonna grab the port one and, uh, oh, okay, there we go. And give it a tug and this should pull in should pull in the mainsail taut against the back of the boat. Almost got the block to the face there. You can see this is why we rig everything before going out. Okay, our traveler is rigged. And can see this block here I can loosen it or tighten it bringing the sail in or out depending on the wind conditions and attack and uh, since we're on land wind tends to be erratic but uh, what this allows me to do is it allows the entire sail to come over to this side or travel back via that block and I only have this one sheet that controls the whole assembly so, pretty simple once you figure it out. Okay, signal halyard. Here we've got the Port Credit Yacht Club Burgi tied to a halyard that goes all the way up to the top of the sprit yard where there's a block suspended from that yard. And that's pretty much fixed to a, a cleat. You don't have to worry, worry about losing it like you do with uh, the shrouds. So, I'm going to send the burgee up. Cue fancy music. With my one-handed halyard. And there it is, up in the block. And then you just secure this to the sprit yard cleat. Right there. Next up, we've got the rudder. So. Here we have our stern post and a gudgy in here, which is a, a vertical hole and another gudgy in here. And we've got two pintles on the rudder that we're going to align with these holes to get this in. And this is so much easier on land because part of the rudder goes underwater and is buoyant, making this such a difficult exercise when it's submerged, but sometimes you don't get the choice. So. See, there's my pintles. They're lining up with the gudgeons. Top one first, then bottom one. And then just give it a wiggle, and you're in. And somewhere attached to all this, there used to be another cotter pin that goes right here to prevent the, the rudder from floating up and off the pintles. So I'm gonna get another one from the lazarette and install that. 
Okay, I'm back with the cotter pin. It just goes right here and locks that in place so it does not, the, boat, the, the rudder doesn't buoy up and, and off its position. Now, we have the tiller, which is this guy right here, with a set of holes here, and they line up with those holes. I'm gonna get that in place here. And then there is a bolt that goes through there. And there's another cotter pin on the back end to secure that. And I'll show you the rudder here, how it works. So here's our tiller assembly with the kick rudder and two halyards for the kick rudder. And these will lift the assembly up so that it's flush with the keel or pull it down. Imagine in the water that's perfectly per uh, perpendicular and goes straight down and that gives us purchase on the water as we steer and also acts somewhat as a, a modern keel. And those lanyards are tied off to cleats that are just above the water line on the rudder so you don't lose them. And more concerningly, they don't get tangled into the propeller, last thing you want. And then up on the tiller here, we've actually got two pieces, one tied to the other, and this is the tiller extension, sometimes called a whip staff. You just push it through the hole and you've got a tiller extension that can move in any direction from wherever you are in the boat. And you can steer no matter which side of the boat you're on or even if you have to come forward a bit, you still have a significant amount of length to work with. Okay, this is starting to look like Psyche, right? So, a few parting thoughts. Uh, always secure the lines, belay them to something, coil them, and make sure they're out of the way. You don't want to trip on them, but you want to know exactly where they are because you're going to be in charge of the same set of ropes throughout the cruise, and uh, you don't want to lose them. I think this needs one more touch though. That's right. So, I hope you enjoyed the rigging video today. Uh, and I hope that uh, in time we can get together and do this in person on land first and then in the water and then learn from a series of mistakes that are inevitable. Don't worry about it, it's going to happen. We're very forgiving about that. It's all about the learning experience. Thanks so much for joining me and have a super day. Maintain a positive psyche.